Welcome to the Soul Forge, a place of silent mystery, quiet contemplation, and outright mayhem. Join your host, Sean Vanderloo, as he guides you through the adventures of living. Together, we'll talk about life and love, sex and dating, joy and heartache, memories and loss, and so much more. Don't worry, it's not nearly as pretentious as it sounds. Get ready for life, the universe, and everything on The Soul Forge. Hey, everybody, welcome to episode 24 of The Soul Forge podcast. I'm your host, Sean Vanderloo. <laughs> Are you going to talk like that the whole time? I just might. <laughs> Okay. All right. As you can tell, listeners, we have a special guest star on this week's episode. Who are you? Uh, my name is Trisha. And how do I know you? Well, a long time ago. I don't remember the year. 2003? You got it. And we met, and uh, we were together, and we had a baby, and now we're here. Here we are. Here we are. Yeah. We were together. We, were, I was, we weren't married married, but we were like married. We might as well have been. Yeah. We were Bought engaged. a house together. Yeah. We, we were engaged. We were engaged for five years. Mm -hmm. You made a big deal out of that. That was cool. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we met during the power outage of North yes. America in 2003. Yes. What happened? Uh, we were sitting in a big circle because we had nothing to do, but we couldn't go anywhere. And everybody was telling their story about where they were, where they came from, and how they got there. And you were the only person who wasn't saying anything. So after everybody was done talking, I was like, hey, you, what's your deal? And um, then you started talking, and then you said something about moving back home because you weren't happy. And I was like, no, don't leave. We just met. You can't just leave. Then we started writing love letters to each other. We did. <laughs> we did. <laughs> Do you still have those? Uh, I thought I gave them to you. I don't know. Maybe you did. I might have put them in Bishop's box. That makes sense. Bishop has a hope chest, so I might have put them in there. I still have all the, the like, remember the big notepad? Because we got tired of using all the paper. Yes. So I still have that notepad somewhere. Uh, yes. It's like 400 sheets, and it's full of letters to me and you. Yeah, we just wrote back and forth. Yeah. Yeah, I remember we had them in a big picture frame on the wall upstairs for a while. Yeah. And then... After, I don't know what i do with that. You, you probably destroyed it after we split up. I think I might have. Yeah. Depends. I think I might have, because I was really mad. Well... For a little while. For a little while I was mad, yeah. Yeah, I don't blame you. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking about that the other day, actually. The whole way we broke up, or the way I left. I, I could have done that better. <laughs> <laughs> you think? <laughs> Yeah. Is there really a good way to pick up with someone after you've been with them for like nine or eight years, however long? Yeah. Is there really a good way? Not really. I don't think so. No. I don't think so. And, well, I don't know how much you want me to say here. No, we'll talk. Okay, this, so this like, is you left me for someone who I was close to. Yeah. So it was just bad all the way around. Not one of my best maneuvers. Well... <laughs> uh no <laughs> definitely not no it was it was rough to go through um i think i think it was so difficult because i saw it happen so clearly and you were i was on, so I was in on denial a, i was on autopilot yeah things were just happening yeah and that's kind of what happens she has that way of being like that yep yeah and since i'm no longer with her i have clearer perspective <laughs> As does every man she's ever been with, yeah. True enough. If history hadn't repeated itself, repeated itself, repeated itself, then, you know, maybe I could forgive her and, and say it was a one-time thing and maybe she really did love you, but she's the exact same person she's been for 20 years, so it's a little difficult to let that go. Right. Yeah. Moving on. Moving on. So, yeah, we met uh, August of 2003, by October of 2003, we were together. Yeah, because you came to Dakota's birthday party. Yes, she turned, eight. what, eight yeah. on the 13th of October. Yeah, I remember we went out to camp for yes. Thanksgiving. Yes, yes. And you didn't know what to do. Well, I just, I, that was the first time I met your dad. <laughs> and he's a man's man. He's a fur trapper. And he had, he had this hunt camp. And he had all this stuff. And I was wearing running shoes. I know. And it was mucky. And I had no idea what I was doing. 
<laughs> like, what am I supposed to be doing here? <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> here, drink some of my dad's wild turkey. So. Yeah. <laughs> Smooth! <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Uh-huh. And, and, and we, we uh, slept in the Suburban. Yeah. If I remember correctly. Yes. Oh, my God, yeah. And it was miserable and cold, and we it had... It was so cold. Deep fried turkey. We did. We yeah. did. Yeah. So, that was quite the experience. I don't know what your dad thought of me, but kind of been too impressed. He thought it was hilarious. Yeah. He 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 was he, he said it was mean for bringing you out there. <laughs> you were mean for bringing me out yeah. there? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Why would you bring this city boy out here? He doesn't know shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, <laughs> they wouldn't come into town, so... Because <laughs> that, thought... that's your dad's thing. Yeah, does, exactly. Does he still fur trap? Uh, Hunt and yes. all that stuff? Yeah, he yeah. does. He, he's retired now, but and he still has his trap line. Um, he's not into it as much as he was back then. Back then, he would stay out there for a month at a time. Um, but now that he's getting older and, you know, like he's 66 now. Right. So it's a little tough on him now, but uh, he still goes out there, still does his thing, still does all the trapping, still spends as much time as my mom will let him out there. Oh, that's good. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that, that was a fun time out at uh, meeting your dad at camp. It was a fun time. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So that, uh, that was the first time I, I met your dad. Uh, I met your daughter, Dakota, on her birthday for the first yep. time. And your mom that same day. Yes. And then the, that weekend was... Thanksgiving. Yep. Okay. Uh, and then uh, we were living together by February of 2004, I believe. Yeah. Right? Yeah, because... We were living in the basement under your sister's house. That's right. Yes. With Eric. Right. Uh, yes. Eric lived there too. Yes, Eric was your roommate. Yes. And then I moved My in. Buddy. And we all lived together for a bit. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah. It was a good time. We had fun. Mm-hmm. That was a tiny place. It was. I don't know how we all fit in there, but we had a good time. We had lots of laughs in there. We did. It was a good time. Yes. And we lived and we there. we did fun things. We had adventures. Did we? Yeah, remember? You were always amazed that you could just say, you know what, we should just do this. And I'd be like, oh, okay, let's go. That, that's right. <laughs> remember, let's go to Sault Ste. Marie. All right. So call mom. Hey, mom, want to take Dakota for the weekend? Sure. Okay. Hey, all right. So my mom's taking Dakota. Let's pack up the van and let's go to Sault Ste. Marie. But now? <laughs> like, yeah, let's go. Right, because I, I would throw. Uh, okay. I would throw out ideas, <laughs> yeah. not thinking they would ever happen, because yeah. I was never with anybody who would make things happen. Right. And you made things happen, <laughs> so we did things. Yes, we did. And that was all right. That yeah. was fun. We had a lot of good times. We did. Yeah. Went to North Bay to visit all your people. That's true. We did. I met Gail and Frank. And Frank. I think I just met Gail the first time. We met Frank the second time. It might have been. I don't remember. Frank's remember Frank's little baby. Emily Grace. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. How old is she now? Um, I guess she'll be nine this month, actually. Ouch. Yeah. That I think so. That was a long so. time ago. That was a long time ago. She was just, just born when we met her. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's that right. That was a long time ago. Holy jeez, eh? Yeah, that's, that's, that's the weekend that Frank introduced me to the Kraken, right? Was that that weekend? I don't remember. No. There were so many weekends. Yeah. We had a lot of fun. Yeah. A lot of road trips. Because we stayed with Happy Sherry. I don't honestly don't remember because we went there so many times. Yeah, I don't that's remember. A, nah, that's a long time ago. It, it is a long time ago. Yeah, so we were together from uh, <clears throat> October of 03 till April of 2012. Thank God you remember all these dates because I don't remember them <laughs> at all. I remember things. I remember, remember when we were driving down that street? Which street? Um, Kirby and... I got really mad at you and reached over and pulled the keys out of the van. I do remember. <laughs> Threw them out the door. Yes. <laughs> and we walked home. We left the van right there. Yeah. Yeah. I was so mad at you that day. Yeah, you were. <laughs> <laughs> Good times. Yeah. Oh, that might be another story one day. <laughs> All the fights. Remember when then we talked about how... Um, People on the street were fighting, and and, and you would say, "Oh, those poor people!" <laughs> Everyone else is like, "Can't believe they're fighting like that!" And you and I were like, "Oh, those poor people! They're just fighting really bad." Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, well, shit happens, I guess, eh? Well, it does. That's right. Yeah, we went through a lot of things together. We did. Yeah. We did. And we came out okay on the other side eventually. We did. I think so. Mm-hmm. Took us a while. Well, there was a. A lot of hurt and a lot of anger to get through. Well, there was. That's right. And I'm sure I, I made you angry. I could imagine. Yeah. Yeah, we had our moments. Yeah. We did. Yeah. 
I don't know where to go from here. <laughs> well, we could talk about specific things that we've done. Okay, like what? Uh, let's see. Uh, well, we've had a couple of kids together. Yes. I was like, no, we have one. Well, we, we, <laughs> right, we had to. We yes. had to. I talked about uh, Xander on the, the loss episode. Yes. So he was, uh, he would have been born January 3rd, right? Yep. 05? Yep. Took me five years to even be able to say his name. I know. I'm still surprised to hear you say his name. It's still not easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you're saying it. That's that's a thing. It's progress. It's improvement, right? Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Growth. It's definitely um, an unforgettable experience. Yes. Yes. I think it brought our whole family closer together, too. I think a shared experience like that is really hard to let go. Like, yes, you hurt me. Yes, you know... There was a lot of anger and animosity, mm-hmm. but ultimately, I can't ever forget that we went through that, and I can't ever l- just let that. I don't know. I guess it kind of it doesn't absolve you from everything, right? But it gives you worth to me, you know. Mm-hmm. And being Bishop's father and wanting to be a good father to Bishop gives you worth. It's worth it for me to let go of my ego and let go of the hurt and the anger. And just be okay with you so I can be a, a good mom and not hurtful and angry towards you. It doesn't help him. It doesn't help you. It doesn't help anybody. Well, it doesn't. And no. and, and I have experience with that with my own parents. For sure. Mm-hmm. And I saw it. Like, I, you know, the way your mom talked about your dad so harshly all the time. And mm-hmm. I didn't want to, I don't want to be that person. Right. And I saw what it did to you. I saw how it just made you internalize everything mm-hmm. and made you feel like you were never good enough for either parent and you just were unhappy all the time like you could never make them happy never and I never ever want Bishop to feel that way I never want him to feel like he has to be put in the middle I never want him to feel like he's not good enough I never want him to feel like he's not making me happy you know that's me that's my issue between you and I if we have shit that's going on that's us that's not him it should be removed from him yeah we don't involve him in any of that stuff no no hey Bishop you know what your mom did to me no I would never say that yeah and you wouldn't say that about me. So. No, no. no. It's and not fair to him. He doesn't need to know that. Right. He's not my friend. He is not my confidant. He's my son, and he deserves to respect both parents. Like, we go through shit. People go through stuff. Mm-hmm. And you either tell everybody and make the other person look horrible so that you look better, yeah. or you just keep it between you and that person so that nobody... You know what I mean? Like, it's not to say that I didn't talk to anybody. Well, of it's course. just that I, you know, there was only one person that I really talked to about everything. Yeah. So, and, and, and ultimately, in the end, it was for the best. Mm-hmm. You did what I didn't know how to do. Because Could you have done it better? Probably. Oh, I know I could But have. I wouldn't have let you go easy. No. I didn't let you go easy. It, it was the hardest thing I ever did. I didn't, and I certainly didn't make it easy for you in any no. way, shape, or form. No. But I never used Bishop as a thing. Right, exactly. Or Dakota. No. Because you had feelings for both. Of course. But. she. I, I think of her as my kid still. Yeah. And she loves that you do stuff for her. Does she? Yeah, she does. Yeah, like what happened this weekend. I, yeah. I gave her my, uh, my old washer and dryer. I know, she's so excited. She can't stand it. She gets to do her own laundry. <laughs> yeah, that is exciting. <laughs> it is. I'm excited she gets to do her own laundry. Because she's not here all the time. <laughs> right? <laughs> right, yes. Yeah. I don't know. I just think that for, like, you know how you talk about this Soul Forge is all about you being better, being different. Mm-hmm. I think that our relationship is a testament to that, to how much of a person or how much growth you've you've accumulated or accomplished as a person. Well, if we could go back and talk to Sean from 14 years ago, I, I don't even think he would recognize Sean from now. Absolutely not. Right? But you hadn't gone through anything. Ah. 14 years ago, you still had, the only person who had ever passed in your life would be your uncle. And my great-grandma. And Right. And you didn't even know them that well. You well, know what I mean? I knew great-grandma very well, but not Didi? the... No. 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 Gertie. Didi's oh, mom. Oh, right. 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 But even still, you didn't know her like... Like you knew Dee Dee and Bumpa. Well, no. And your mom. No, that's right. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah, you knew her, but she wasn't that. She wasn't your person, one of your people. In those 14 years, all of your people have passed. Pretty much. And you suffered a trauma in your own, like our, when, when Xander died. That was ginormous. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I always felt responsible for all the... The life you uh, yeah. allowed me to live? Yeah. Or showed me? Uh, uh, well, because... 
up until then, you were like this perfect little innocent thing. You know, nothing bad ever happened to you. And then I walk in and poof, everything goes to shit. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's one way to put it, right? Well, and I know it's not my fault. Like, no. But I still felt guilty. You, like You just I, happened to be there for <clears throat> the formative years of my life. Right. But, you know, normally people go through the formative years of their life when they're teenagers. Yeah. You were like stagnant for 20 years. And all of your formative years happened in your 20s, like in your late 20s and 30s. Which is crazy because usually everybody's already gone through that shit and they take it out on their parents, but that's not what happened. <laughs> you took it out on me. <laughs> Pretty much. That's what happened. I don't know why it was that way. Because you were sheltered. I, I was very I sheltered. Yeah. yeah my, my mom uh, kept us pretty sheltered, I guess. Yeah. She just loved you a lot. Too much. Yeah. Well, I, I, I mean, that's... She did what she did. She did what she could. Well, that's right. She had her own traumatic childhood upbringing stuff. Right. So she didn't know how to be a mom. No. All she knew was how to love you guys. Right. So she did. Yeah. In fact, uh, this uh, this evening before we came over, mm -hmm. uh, Bishop and I were going through old pictures, old oh, photo yeah. albums. <laughs> and, and there's photo albums of me when I was a baby. And uh, when, when he was a baby, there, there's a picture of him. A bunch, Bishop? Yeah, Bishop. Okay. Uh, on Moor, just after he was born. And uh, there, there's pictures of when Mom and Bill came up with Curtis and Robin. Yes. And they're all holding him. Aww. And he's in his uh, Montreal Canadian. I was just going to say, remember we had the Canadians one and we had the the other one? Maple Leafs? Didn't we have both? And we had to take pictures of with both? I think we did, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Because mm -hmm. you're... Mom was all about Canadians? No, that or was Bill. Bill. So Bill was all about Canadians and Mom was all about the Leafs? Yeah. So yeah, we have pictures of them both. I remember those pictures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll have to show you them sometime. I have them. You, you must. You've got lots of pictures everywhere. I don't have them on the wall anymore. No, you took me down. <laughs> and Uncle Spock. People still ask where Uncle Spock is. Do they? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I had to tell someone that really wasn't my uncle. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Like, that's actually Spock from Star Trek. He was never really my uncle. <laughs> right, yes. For for the listeners, we, we ha I have a picture of, of Spock in, what, a, like a 16 by 20 frame or something? Mm, yeah. Yeah, and it was always on our wall, just above the stairs. <laughs> and the, on the family wall. <laughs> on the family wall of pictures. Yeah. We called him Uncle Spock. Uncle Spock. <laughs> yeah. I still have that somewhere. I'm not sure where it is, but... Uh... <laughs> I don't want it back. You don't? No, I'm good. <laughs> I think Lynn bought me that picture. Did she? Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Lynn's the reason I moved to Dimmons in the first place. I know. Yeah, so here we are. It's been, what, five and a half years, and... Already? Yeah? Well, since April of uh, 2012. Holy crap. And now it's November 2017. Wow. So time flies. But it doesn't feel like it's all that long sometimes. No. No, because you got married... In July? No, you got married. I got married June 29th. Of? 2013. And Bridget and I got married uh, no, Remembrance Day 2012. Oh, right. We just had but our... then you had a... We had a big party in, in the following July. Oh, okay. we were originally supposed to get married in the July. Oh, okay. But for whatever reason, she wanted to get married right away. Yeah. So we got married right away and for whatever reason... she had to be first. She had to be first. And my brother had just gotten married... To Debbie, yes, uh, that August, right, and so she wanted to be Mrs. Vanderloo as well. And <laughs> of course, she did. you know, I just did whatever she wanted because that's the kind of guy I am. <laughs> so, I, I, which episode was it? You were talking about how you follow girls around. That was the last episode. Was it okay? Yeah. So I listened to that and I laughed like hilariously because you say all these things like, you know. Uh, I, I do this because of a girl, I do this because of a girl, I do this because of a girl. Girls do the same thing for it, guys, yeah. yeah. So instead, though, they in the society would real, real romanticize it. So it would be like, you did it for love. That Actually, speaking of that, did you make that comment? Yeah. That was you who yeah. made the comment? Yeah. Okay. I did. I, I was going to say. You can't see that it's me? No, it doesn't say who made the comment. Oh, yeah. So I was like, instead of seeing all these things as a negative aspect... Put a positive spin on it. You did it all for love. That's right. So I did it all for love. You did. And that's that's one of my favorite things about you. You always turn things around. And you've always made me see things from a different perspective, which I've never been able to do. What do you mean? Like, well, just like just like now. You, you said, in, instead of saying, I did all this stuff because, say, I did it for love. 
Well, because you you take everything as a negative. So when you first were starting to when you apply at the post office, you yeah. remember? Yeah. You remember what everybody said? No. Can't do that. You're Mr. Horizontal. Uh, that was Bumpa's nickname for me. Yeah. Horizontal. Because I like to lay down. Yeah. Because you're freaking nine feet tall and well, there's nowhere else to put your legs. That's why. Right. Basically. I have a hard time putting my legs places. Yes. Yeah. And the only reason I know that is because Bishop's the same way. Yeah, he's tall too. Like he, he has to have his legs stretched out. Right. So I get it. Yeah. Because you're tall. It's not comfortable to sit upright. Right. Mm-hmm. So when you first started applying at the post office, everybody told you, uh, you're, even if you get this job, you're never going to last. You're not going to like it. You're going to have to walk all the time in the snow and the sleet. And, la, 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 la. and it was just a, it was just overload of you can't do this. Negativity. Yeah. Yeah. Who told like, me, who aside told me from that? the fact. My mom used to say that. Yeah. She was pretty negative sometimes. Well, uh, it, like it has a pension, first of all. Yeah. It's phenomenal wages. You get a boot allowance. <laughs> like, Seriously, <laughs> when I saw your very first uh, thing and it said boot allowance, I'm like, what? They pay you to buy boots? They give you warm clothes to wear. They make sure that you're prepared. They train you properly. Like, it's a great job. It's, and you get to walk. You get exercise. You get outside. You get to listen to your podcasts. Yeah, I love listening to podcasts while I walk. You don't have to talk to people. I which love not talking hate. to people. I know. <laughs> I know. So I couldn't understand why you just assume that. It's all bad. And you, you, you did that for everything, you know? Yeah. Let's buy a house. Why should we buy a house? Then we're going to have to do stuff. I'm like, well, <laughs> because if we don't buy a house, then we're going to have to rent forever, and we'll still have to do stuff. Yeah, see, that, that's the negativity of my upbringing. And I, I'm hoping you beat some of that out of me. Over well, I didn't really give you an option. No. I just kind of said we're doing it. Yeah. And you were like, okay. <laughs> Pretty much. Just drag me along. Right. Sean, Sean just gets swept up in the tide of things. Sometimes, yeah. I think uh, I you just have to come into your own, and it's nice to see that you are like this podcast thing. Mm-hmm. I don't know who, I don't know how you got started, but I know that you're doing it by yourself now. This is all you. Yeah, that's all And me. that's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wanted to have something out there that was an honest, open forum. And I think it'll be amazing for Bishop one day. That's... Part of the reason why I want to do this, yeah. I, I like I started the rusted robot. Yes, started it with Bridget. Yeah, and then we, it doesn't we, matter why you started no, it. There's always something you wanted to do. I, I wish I had recordings of my grandparents and my yeah. mom. You know their voice, their opinions yeah. on things, and so now Bishop will have hundreds of hours. <laughs> hundreds <laughs> of hours, literally. I know because it's all there. Yeah, we just did episode 175 of the rusted robot this past weekend. I don't know if he'll ever listen to any of that stuff. I think he will when he's older. He might, but it's there. Yeah. And it's, uh, by the time he gets around to it, it'll all be ancient pop culture. When I'm listening to it, he comes and lays on the couch and listens to it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. And he giggles. And there's this now, the Soul Forge. Yes. Which is designed to be an open, honest forum Mm -hmm. to, to get my stories out because people aren't honest. Generally, no. Right. It's too hard to be honest. And I know I've had a lot of trouble with that. Yeah. And so this is really taking me out of my comfort zone, and I'm talking about things that I, I shouldn't talk about. Well, talk honesty about. is is uh, ownership. Yes. You know, like, I own this. I uh, I did this. I own it. Mm-hmm. And it's really hard for people to own, because then they have to suffer the consequences themselves, and they have no one to blame but their own self. Admitting your mistakes is a hard thing to do. It is. But it makes you grow. Like, so you screwed up everybody screws up and if you live your whole life trying to pretend that you didn't screw up ever you're just gonna disappoint your own self well yeah you know uh-huh. and it took me 40 years to get here but hey what matters is you got here that's right doesn't matter how you got here no nope. it's just that you got here exactly and <laughs> love you too buddy <laughs> you want to come and talk on the uh, podcast there chum no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. He, he does not want to. You will one day. Yeah, I think he. Will. I'm hoping he'll uh, submit to an interview or something, <clears throat> or a conversation. Not really an interview, more of a conversation. I think, I think I, you'll end up interviewing him. Yeah. 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 He's good if you ask him questions. He he's not very much of a conversationalist. Well, it depends. Right. He could go on and on about Minecraft and all that other weird stuff, <laughs> but and just random things. Yes. If you're you're driving. Driving is the best time to talk to him. Cheryl picked him up this afternoon to bring, yeah. to bring him over to our house. Yeah. And she said he didn't stop talking. That's right. So 
And you, <laughs> you like to tell him to get to the point. He yeah. tells a story like you do. Yeah? Yeah. Ramble? Yeah. And then you, and you're like, oh my God, get to the point. And I talk like that. Yeah. I do. have a million tangents. I, well, yeah. Oh. But obviously. I guess so, eh? So yesterday I listened to the Soul Forge podcast that told us about your girl troubles. Stup- or, stupid things because of girls? Yeah. And you talked about like what? Ten different things? Yeah. Yeah. The, the pork and beans story. I must have told you that before. No. I never told you about the pork you and beans story. You did not. That, I laughed because I was like, wow, there's something else I didn't know about that you. That was very traumatic. I was in love with Nicole. <laughs> Big time. Sure, I was only eight or nine or ten or whatever I was. I'll never eat pork and beans again. And I've maybe eaten <laughs> pork and beans three or four times since then. I was trying to think of it too. I'm like, I don't think we ever ate pork and beans. Like, ever. I refused. Yeah. No, not doing it's it. It's not in your forte. Nope. I remember when you moved in with me with your box of sidekicks. Yeah. And 23 totes of crap. <laughs> yes. I've got more than 23 totes of crap yeah, now. I can imagine. But I finally reached the point where I'm starting to sell it off. <clears throat> That's kind of cool. So, because I, I don't need the stuff to define me anymore, I've decided. You used to. I, I totally needed to because yeah. I was Sean the Collector. Yeah. This is my stuff. Yeah. I like Star Trek. And that's it. Yeah, I remember every Christmas thinking, oh my God, what am I going to get for you this year? Like, what do I, I have to find something that topped what I bought you last year. And it still was never enough. It always made me sad. I could still, I never found that one thing that made you, oh my God, this is awesome. Well, I, on one of the previous episodes, I told the story of when you bought me the Iron Man statue. Yeah. And I'd wanted it and wanted it and wanted it. I finally got it and I looked at it and I was like, oh good. And then I put it on the shelf and never thought about it again. You were so sad. I was. And the Adat, remember the Adat? Yeah. It was like three hundred bucks for that thing. No, it was only one hundred twenty-five. Okay, still. <laughs> it but was yeah. very expensive. <laughs> it, it was. It was. What else did I get you? God, I got you lots of things. Yeah. Wait, Good night. Good night. Good night, Bishop. Love you. Love you too. <laughs> we, we got each other lots of things back in the day. Yeah. I don't remember what the other thing was. There was the Iron Man thing. The, the big uh, battle damage dead two hundred nine from Robocop. Remember the big. I don't remember. There's so many things. Yeah, I've still got them. Yeah. I'm sure. Did you keep all the big things? Uh, I traded the ad out away. Jeff has it, but I oh, got, yeah. but I got a rogue statue in return. Oh, there you go. So. You like that ad ad thing? Yeah, but it took up so much room. It did. It was friggin' huge. Yeah, gigantic. So. Yes. It went to a good home. What else? We traveled. Where did we go? We went to Thunder Bay. We did go to Thunder Bay several went times. To North Bay. Y- yeah. To all the bays. Sudbury. Oh my God! Remember when to <laughs> we went fishing? Uh, so oh, <laughs> the the that's when that we first went to Thunder Bay. Yes. And, and I just bought my Xbox the week before, <laughs> and and we went, <laughs> and we rented cottage cat, cat, cabins. Yeah. In Long Lake. Yeah. Okay. And we went for the week. Was it a week? Yeah. About that, eh? Yeah. And we went with your sister. Yep. And her boyfriend Pete. Yeah. And your parents. Yeah. And your sister, right? And all the kids. All the kids, right. Yeah. And everybody went and did all this outdoorsy stuff. Yeah. And I spent the entire week playing Baldur's Gate yeah. in the cabin on the Xbox <laughs> that I brought up with me. And I went out fishing once. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's, <laughs> those were the days of my life. <laughs> uh, Everyone's like, is he not coming? No. Nope. <laughs> Does he not like fishing? Not so much. No. <laughs> What's he doing in there? Playing on the Xbox. Ooh, what's an Xbox? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, then never mind. <laughs> well, I had just got it the week before. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I remember. <laughs> yeah, I remember. And, and I, I like going on trips. I don't necessarily like doing stuff once I'm there, <laughs> apparently. But, right. Uh, or at least I didn't 14 years ago. No. But. Uh, no. <laughs> oh. We had other fun. We did? Yeah. We did. Yeah, we, we traveled around Northern Ontario quite a bit. I think that's it. Subbury. While I was with you, I went to Nova Scotia. Oh, you went to Nova Scotia. That's right. But that's... Uh... Yeah. We never went uh, f- further south than North Bay. We never went to Toronto or anything, I don't think. Mm, I don't think so. No. I did. Yeah, you traveled lots for work. Yeah. I was trying to think of where I went with you. I didn't. I went to Nova Scotia. Yeah. With Sandra. And mm-hmm. I went to Toronto and Barrie and Ottawa, but not... No, we never did that. No. 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 We were stuck in the north. Yep. I left you home with the kids. Yeah, you did. <laughs> but when I came back from Nova Scotia, and my suitcase was... <laughs> I had to pay an extra $100 for my extra suitcase because I bought all that stupid stuff. Um, remember the game Bishop had? Skylanders. 
Uh, Remember all the Skylanders I bought? Because right. we had just got it for them. And you're like, go look for this. Go look for that. Because there's a Toys R Us there. Oh, yeah, yeah. I called you for the Toys R Us. You're like, go get this one. <laughs> <laughs> Always have to pack an extra suitcase for the toys you have to bring home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, those are for your kids? Yeah. No. <laughs> for my no. husband. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. I got off the plane in Bishop. <laughs> Poor Dakota looked like she hadn't showered in a week. Bishop had a coat on that didn't even belong to him. <laughs> he had taken someone else's coat from school and you didn't even notice. Really? Yeah. <laughs> he looked awful. You guys look so worse for wear. I was like, oh, my poor family. <laughs> and all he said was, thank God you're home. <laughs> Sounds about right. Never leave again. Yeah. <laughs> Bishop still talks about me leaving. Are you coming back soon? <laughs> Not like that time you were gone forever. <laughs> How does he remember that? I don't know. I think it traumatized him. Must have. You know, it's weird. We sit around and talk all the time. Mm -hmm. Now that we're actually recording, I'm like, I don't know what to say. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's, it's hard when you're in front of a microphone. It is. Mm -hmm. It is. Because it doesn't flow as well. Well, because I'm always thinking about, okay, what should we talk about next? What should I say? What shouldn't I say? There's, uh, there's no limits on the podcast. Yeah, I heard your brother's conversation. That was pretty interesting. Oh, the road trip <laughs> yeah. episode. Yeah. Yeah. That was the funniest one so far. Yeah. Robin was here this past weekend. Yeah. And we were hoping to get a Soul Forge in, but it was too quick of a trip for him. So. Yeah. Did he only stay overnight? He stayed two nights. He, he got oh. here late Friday night. Took him nine and a half hours to do a five-hour trip. Why? Because uh, he, he took the 129 and it was bad oh. roads. And he was driving his buddy's truck instead of his own car. Oh. So. That's not cool. And then he left Sunday morning. And you took all your stuff back? I gave him a load of crap. What is he going to do with it all there? Oh, uh, he gave some to Curtis, and Curtis wasn't impressed. <laughs> so, Sorry, Curtis. I said, this is all family stuff. You guys get to decide what you want to do with it, because uh, I don't want to throw it out, because it's That's right. our, our family stuff. But if you, if you don't want it. Your mom would haunt you forever if right, you did. Right, exactly. But I, I don't have any room for it anymore, so they can decide what to do with it. Sell it, throw it out, I don't care. But so I don't want to be responsible. I don't, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to be responsible. <laughs> That's how you've lived your whole life. <laughs> right. Well, there was this, this, <clears throat> these orange statues that were my grandparents. Yeah. And one of them broke and the head fell off. But I kept it because they were my grandparents from 30 odd years ago. Okay. And so just two weeks ago, I, I sent a picture of them to my brother. And I said, what are we doing with these guys? Uh, these were our grandparents. <laughs> and... and Little, little, uh, I guess African statues, really. They were black people in orange outfits. Okay. Probably racist as hell. <laughs> I don't even know. But they had them forever. I don't even know why. Yeah. Where they came from. And I said, are we keeping these? Are we throwing them out? What do we do with them? And they both said, throw them out. I did. And? It hurt me. You didn't die. I didn't die. You didn't burst into flames. I didn't. And you're all good. But I feel like it's my responsibility to be the keeper of the stuff. Now that I'm the only one left in the family that's old like that. But remember we used to watch those shows all the time? Yeah. The organizational shows there? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they used to always say, your your grandfather or whatever, they're not in this item. Right. The memories aren't in the things. That's right. Yeah. And now that we have like such easy access to photography and, mm -hmm. and keeping everything, like you just keep a picture of it. Right. You know? Yeah. Look, this is what Grandma and Papa used to have on the shelf and blah, 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 blah. That's right. Because really, do you need to keep that god-awful thing? I don't. Right. And when I was a kid, <clears throat> the stuff that was my grandparents were like sacred things because, you know, Bumpa, he was yeah. kids that should be seen and not heard and yeah. don't touch anything yeah. and don't draw on the windows with your finger in oh, the yeah, car. I remember. Uh, yeah. Don't touch the locks. you got to wear it out. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Well, the, the first time you, you met him, mm -hmm. we drove to the Sioux and... Met him on his, one of his birthdays, and you saw him in the in the parking lot. Yeah, with his rolled up pants, and you said, "Oh, there's Sean." Yeah, right. So much like him, rolled up pants and Velcro shoes, <laughs> trying to make a car battery do something that it shouldn't. Well, he was an old mechanic from way back, and yes. he was always trying to do stuff. Yeah, but but the point was, I got rid of the racist orange and black statue thing, and it took a lot out of me to get rid of this stuff. But it was just in a box in the back of a closet. So really, did I need it? Right. I have the memories. Yeah. And I don't think it's worth anything. So. What's and they used to say like, if you're not, if it's in the back of your closet, then you're not showing it respect, and you don't care about it anyway. Right. Exactly. So if you respected it and you really wanted it to have a have it out and mm -hmm. have it on display, then do that. Mm -hmm. You know, buy the proper shelf for it and put it up somewhere. Yeah. 
But if you don't, and you don't care about it, then just leave it. Don't worry about it. And it turns out, none of that stuff was as high as quality as I thought it was when I was a kid. It's just a whole bunch of crap. Yeah, but when you're a kid, those things are important because you see how your parents or your grandparents place importance upon them. Right. And back in the day, they didn't have money. So when they did have money and they chose to buy those things, mm -hmm. it was a huge deal. Well, that's right. Stuff was a huge deal to them. Yes. Because they didn't have, like, knickknacks weren't really a big thing. Mm -hmm. So if you had money, and, and like, my grandma, I, she chose to actually spend her hard-earned money on this, then that's something worth respect. But they had it out. Yeah. And they would dust it, like, daily. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, oh, if yeah. grandma wasn't cooking, she was dusting stuff. So... It's different now. Yeah. It's not like that. Everything is like, oh, where'd you get this? At the dollar store. You can buy it for a dollar and you can yeah. have 5,000 of them in your house at the same time. Right. And it doesn't you know? mean anything. So it's different. Yeah, it is. It's just a different perspective now that I'm this age. Mm -hmm. And they would have been this age when they bought it and I was a kid. And, That's you know, right. So That's yeah, right. it's just weird. Well, can you imagine them placing the importance of things like that you do nowadays? Like social media. Can you ever imagine Bumpa? I, I can't imagine my grandfather Bumpa on, on Twitter. Right. <laughs> what do you mean you want to tell the world what you're having for supper? Right. They don't care. <laughs> right. <laughs> Who do you think you are? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they, they would laugh at you. They would think that's absolutely ridiculous. And it kind of is. It totally is. Mm -hmm. But that's what our world is about right now. Yeah. It's a super cool thing. And why not? You Every, know? Everybody's looking at me. Look at hey, me. John from... Nova Scotia is eating peanut butter sandwich right now. Look at it. It looks amazing. It's awesome. <laughs> they cut the crust off. Right? <laughs> it's awesome. Oh, I cut the crust off. Oh, my God. <laughs> John and I could be best friends. <laughs> right? If only I lived where he does. Right? Yeah. No. Yeah, nobody cares. No. Nobody cares. What did you have for supper? Who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember. That's right. right. Show me something interesting. Yeah. And, and that's, that's where I've gotten to. It's all just white noise now. Yeah. Cause, yeah, because I don't care. It, the internet used to be super cool because you could see what John from Nova Scotia was eating. Mm -hmm. And in the background, you could see the beautiful scenery. Right. And, and the ships. And he was eating a peanut butter sandwich on the ship. Yeah. You know, or he had actually made the peanut butter from peanuts in his backyard. <laughs> Something super cool like that. But now, it's just legit. Like, John went and bought some Jiffy peanut butter and made a peanut butter sandwich. And now he's eating it. Exactly. Like big whoop. Yeah, nobody cares. No. No. It's and, all white noise. And in fact, John probably doesn't even care. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know who John is. Right. <laughs> Why are we talking about John? Because <laughs> we're talking about social media. Yes. Yeah. Like, uh, I just got a notification last week that it was my sixth birthday on Twitter. Oh. And that brought back all kinds of bad memories. I bet. Stuff. Why I, I bet. joined that and... Crap! And, oh boy. <laughs> I think I saw that too. Actually, I yeah. saw your on your feed. It said "Happy Six Years," and I was mm -hmm. like, "Yeah, I remember that." <laughs> yeah, that was the beginning of the end of us. So. Yeah, yeah, it was. Oh boy, it was. Yeah, it's funny too because people say, "Oh, if cell phones are the the death of relationships and this and that." No, they're not. Right. It's just convenient. Mm -hmm. It's a convenient thing to place the blame on. Yeah. You know, people were cheating long before there were cell phones. No, true. They were just better at it. <laughs> right. You know, <laughs> cell phones are just tattlers, that's all. Cell phones make it worse. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they make it worse for, and they make it more difficult for you to hide because now you're just stupid. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, text me later, I'll delete it. Oh, look at all the text messages on here. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I remember those days. Yeah, sometimes I'd like to have a do over. Yeah. I wouldn't have learned as much as I've learned in the meantime no had to go through some hard things but i think you just had to go through some things that's probably what it was i like had listening to you talk about your teenage years and yeah. your college years and stuff like that yeah. you didn't do anything no not really you never had any relationships you didn't no, very sporadic and sparse ones. yeah but like no serious ones yeah you know yeah you followed a lesbian around for 20 years or however <laughs> long it was good year and a half anyway yeah i said i'm just gonna go do what this girl does I know, I know she's a lesbian, but I like her. Right, <laughs> yeah. right. So, yeah, this is Jack's wasted life. <laughs> uh-huh. So, yeah, you, I don't know. I guess you saved all the, all the, living the hard stuff for me. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for that. Hey, thanks for being there for it. Hey, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> well, look at where we are now. 
Yeah. Could could you have imagined us doing this five years ago? No. Right? No, I would have killed you five years ago. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. And nobody would have blamed you. I, I am aware. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> people still say. It's funny to see the shock on some people's faces when we're seen in public, well, like with the curling thing. Well, yeah, the we, we just went, so what was it, four weeks ago, you and I took yeah. Bishop to curling. And... <laughs> Darryl Can I leave there. you guys in the same room? <laughs> Are you going to be okay together? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have. Uh, when was the last time we saw him? Like five, six years ago? No, it was longer than longer that because he was working. Oh yeah, right. So we were together actually at the last time he right. saw us. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It's so, still amusing to see people's faces. Well, yeah, because they don't know our history. Or yet. when they, you know, we're sitting at the table shooting, <laughs> shooting the shit, and you walk in, and everyone's like, he just walks in like that. <laughs> oh yes, <'Cause laughs> it's I'm, okay. Because I'm your mailman. <laughs> right. Yes, that's right. <laughs> And every once in a while, I'll come in to go for a pee because yeah. you're halfway through my day. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. This this summer, <laughs> there were your old friends who you used to have coffee with on Sunday afternoons with Bridget. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's why it's you're... still, you know, no one ever sits in her chair. No, eh? No. And, and it's like we just revert back to that, the four of us. Mm -hmm. She's still missed, you know. It's awful. Yeah, but it is. But as much as I hate to admit it, she was fun. She was a lot of fun, Bridget. Yeah. I should have a conversation like this with her on this, or I'll just have a good ep solo episode where I tell stories about it. <laughs> one or the other. Did I, did I Would she have a conversation with you like this? Uh, she might. I don't, I don't think know. she doesn't have an honest bone in her body. No, I, I think don't. she would spontaneously combust if you asked her some questions. Did I, did I tell you what I, I did uh, on our anniversary? I think I might have told you, but I didn't tell the audience yet. <laughs> okay, so Remembrance Day was our fifth wedding anniversary. We're not divorced yet, but we haven't been together in two and a half years. Okay, so <laughs> for whatever reason, her boyfriend, who was friends of ours, surprisingly enough. Uh, anyway, that's a long story, but uh, he's still my friend on Facebook for some reason. I don't know why he never took me off, and I, I didn't take him off yet because I was waiting to do this thing. So... <laughs> <laughs> on the on the eleventh, I wrote on his wall. I said, hey, "Hey, Mark, could you do me a favor? You're dating my wife, but it's our anniversary. So if you could do me a favor and take her out to dinner and buy her some flowers <laughs> for me, that would be awesome. Because I think if I did it, that would be inappropriate. LOL." <laughs> so it was on there all day. And later that evening, she texted me. She says, "Good God, man, why? Why would you write that on my boyfriend's wall?" <laughs> I said, "It's funny. It's funny. Didn't you laugh?" I'm, I didn't tell her I've been waiting two years to do that. <laughs> so That's awesome. Yeah. She will never get her comeuppance in this lifetime. I don't think she will. No. She, she, she's just going to continue on with her path of destruction, and that'll be she it. She just repeats itself, repeats itself, repeats itself. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Repeat and repeat. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's hilarious. That's, that's, it. that's a great story. You know what? I just thought of something that you should do. Okay. You should do a whole Soul Forge podcast on all of the malicious things you've ever done. That's you remember my favorite story? Uh, the cheese in the dryer. Yes! <laughs> I think I might have mentioned that That's on the here. best one I, ever! I, I can't remember if I've ever told that story on the podcast, <laughs> but... Uh, you, should, you should do a whole thing just on that. Worst things you've ever done. That's a good idea. That's my favorite one. I still tell that story to everybody. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty sweet. <laughs> it's hilarious. And she probably blamed the kid, so... I would. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Right. <laughs> Having what in right mind? Who in their right mind would do this as an adult? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody who went bankrupt because of her. That's right, who. <laughs> right. Just all the, the things that you've done. I don't, I don't think I've done a lot of malicious things because I'm not a malicious type person. No. But every but once in a while. when you do. <laughs> <laughs> you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's true. <laughs> like how... The only thing I can remember you doing here is when you were leaving, and I didn't know you were leaving, but mm -hmm. you were like packing shit up from the basement, putting it in the shed. For like a week. For however long. <laughs> yeah. And if I could do it all over again, I, I would have just said, hey, listen, I'm not happy. Yeah. I think we're over. That would have worked anyway. I would have fought you to the nail. You know it would have. Uh, yeah, but it, it would have made me feel like a better person had I been honest instead of just leaving you a letter and going. <laughs> I wonder if I still have that letter. I hope not. I think I do somewhere. Oh, man. I'm not sure. Where. That might be interesting to read on a podcast if <laughs> or something. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. 
So yeah, that's uh, that's the story of us. We went through a pile of crap. Yeah. Had a lot of great times. I remember when we first got together, we would count how many great weekends in a row it had yes. been. Yes. Another yes. great weekend, another great weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because you just, you were always talking about how your weekends just sucked balls all the time. Mm-hmm. This weekend was horrible. I didn't do anything fun. So I was always watching those miserable kids of Lynn. Yeah. Well, they were miserable because they didn't do anything. And you didn't know how to be a parent. Well, no. Because you were still a child your own self. And you just let them do whatever they wanted. Didn't understand. <laughs> well, I never... I had to go because the little one put clothes in the washing machine. Or in the tub full of water. I'm like, what? <laughs> That's crazy. You know she's having a baby? Is she? That's scary. Indeed. Well, I guess she's old enough. Yeah. Yeah, I she guess. is. She'd be, what, 18, 19 years old? No, now? older than that. Older than that? she's 20, yeah. Yeah, eh? I think so, because she's uh, she was in my class last year, the year before. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I, I know her and I haven't been together in 14 years, so... And she was, what, six? Maybe she was six? I Maybe think five she was. Or six? I she was remember. in school. Yeah, she was in school, that's right. Yeah, she that's was true. five or six at least, so yeah. it makes her at least 19, 20. True. At the very least. Yeah. Hard to remember. Yeah. But... Do you ever wonder about all the kids you ever... All the kids that I was a parent yeah. to? Yeah. There's a lot of them. Yeah. Uh-huh. I know. You ever wonder if they think about you? Yeah. Or what they think about you? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, I get curious about it sometimes, but yeah. I'm not going to track them down. No. Hey, remember when I was your parent for, uh, <laughs> <laughs> for a year and a half or whatever it was? Yeah. yeah. I was always very careful with Dakota. Yeah. I didn't really introduce her to anybody. Mm-hmm. You were the first person that I introduced her to. Yeah. And you stayed for a few years, so that was okay. And yeah. then after you was, well, after you was Phil, so... Right, and I was there for eight and a half years yeah. of her life, so yeah. formative years. Yeah. So that's pretty much it. That is. Yeah. Any, any other stories you want to bring up before we sign off? Mm, can't think of any. If our listeners would like to reach you on Twitter, is there a way to do that? Are you still on Twitter? Um, yes. Do you remember but I don't remember what it is. You don't remember what your handle is? I think it's just my name. I'll, I'll comment it. Can I do that? Sure you can. Okay. Yeah. So after you edit and do all this fun stuff with it, I'll just comment it. Yeah, I can put it in the show notes. Cool. Or uh, they can just email the Soul Forge podcast. There you go. Soulforgepodcast at gmail.com if you want to get a hold of Trish. Why uh, would they want to get a hold of me? To f- know some more funny stories about me. Oh, God. But nobody emails me. Oh, but you have to tell the flame story. On the van? Yes. Have you told that story? I have yet? not told that story. You need to tell that story. Of when you were pregnant. and I was so pregnant. You were so pregnant. I was like... 10 months pregnant with a 20 pound baby <laughs> pretty well that's about it yeah and i have what's called pic or poor impulse control <laughs> i've diagnosed myself with that that's great self-diagnostic that's awesome mm-hmm. and uh, i just do randomly things because i can't help it and so one day i said i'm gonna go paint flames on the van and you're like okay <laughs> and then i did it and it looked like crap. where did you get the paint I probably, uh, you know, I've always wondered that. I probably went and got it at Canadian Tire because I had ideas in my head and I was going to do this one day. I always wondered where the hell did you get that paint? Or I thought, I... was the paint just laying around and you just decided he was going to do it? Or did he just decide he was going to do it and you go buy the paint? Because I... we lived all the way in Porcupine. Yeah. I don't know where the yellow paint came from, but I know the pink and the green fluorescent paint yeah. that I spray painted the lines on the van with. Yes. I bought that specifically for that. Oh, God. Yeah. And then I remember a few weeks later or a week later or however long it was, we were at the lights <laughs> right by the Hollinger Park and these girls were looking at you and you're like, look, they're looking at me. And then they started laughing and you're like, why did you let me do that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I laughed and I said, because you see those girls laughing? That's why. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, the beaver van. Yeah. You love the beaver van. Yeah. And then we had the green van for a while. Uh-huh. Remember how you refused to go get it checked out? Because we thought it was really broken. Yes. And I finally got it around the corner. He <laughs> tightened the, the nut underneath there. And it's like, there you go, all done. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was going to be like a $5,000 job to get it fixed. And they did it for free. It was just a tightening. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Those were fun days. Oh, yeah. Good times. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Say lovey. That's right. Well, thanks for being a part of my life and a part of the show. You're welcome. Uh, listeners, thanks for... Uh, listening to the show and subscribing and downloading and telling all your friends about the Soul Forge podcast. And remember, no matter how dirty and ruined it becomes, it doesn't become you. This has been another episode of the Soul Forge podcast with Sean Vanderloo. If you'd like to contact the show, email us at soulforgepodcast at gmail.com. 
We are Soul Forge Pod on Twitter. You can follow Sean on Twitter and Instagram at Darth Vader Luke. Please rate and review us in Apple Podcasts or the podcatcher of your choice. To support the show for as little as a dollar a month, visit patreon.com slash Darth Vaderloo. Thanks for visiting the Forge. We will see you for the next episode.